Welcome to worship, wherever you may be worshiping from this day. I'm so glad you have joined us once again to gather around God's Word. We're going into Memorial Day weekend, and you know, if you take any 10 Americans and you put them in a room and you ask them about the coronavirus, you're going to have some people way on this side saying, we have to take this more seriously, we're not taking this seriously enough. And you have people on the other side saying, I'll never wear a face mask in my life, and this is being blown out of proportion. And the other eight will be somewhere in between that spectrum. But as we gather on Memorial Day weekend, what I'm so thankful for is this, is that we have freedom in this nation, that we can express those opinions, we can express those feelings and thoughts freely, because there's been men and women throughout the years who have died and sacrificed that we might have that freedom. We have that First Amendment freedom to worship online and speak freely the truth of Christ or in person. We'll never forget the sacrifices that men and women have made over the years that we have this freedom to gather and to speak. We begin our worship by singing, Crown Him with Many Crowns, 525. Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. Hark how the heavenly anthem drowns, all music but its own. Awake my soul and sing of him who died for thee. Thy matchless King through all eternity. Crown him the Lord of life, who triumphed o'er the grave, and rose victorious in the strife for those he came to save. His glories now we sing, who died and rose on high, who died eternal life to bring, and lives that death may die. Crown him the Lord of heaven, enthroned in worlds above, Crown him the king to whom is given the wondrous name of love. Crown him with many crowns as thrones before him fall. Crown him, ye kings, with many crowns, for he is king of all. We'll follow the order of divine service, setting three on page 184 in front of your hymnals if you have one at home. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near the true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I'm heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. 
upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word announce the grace of God to all of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee. We glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, have the King, God the Father, Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O King of glory, Lord of hosts, uplifted in triumph far above all heavens, leave us not without consolation, but send us a spirit of truth, whom you promised from the Father. For you live and reign with him and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continue with our lessons. The first lesson according to Acts chapter 1. They returned to Jerusalem from a hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James and son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the woman, with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120, and said, Brothers, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit spoke long ago through the mouth of David concerning Judas who served as a guide for those who arrested Jesus. He has one of our number one, won our number and shared in them this ministry. With the reward he got for his wickedness, Judas bought a field. There he fell headlong. His body burst open and all his intestines spilled out. Everyone in Jerusalem heard about this. So as they called the field there in their language, al that is, field of blood. For this, Peter, it is written in the book of Psalms, may his place be des deserted, let there be no one to dwell in it, and may another take his place of leadership. 
Therefore, it is necessary to choose one of the men who have been with us. The whole time the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from John, John's baptism to the time when Jesus was taken up from us. For one of these must become a witness with us for his resurrection. So they proposed two men, Joseph called Barsabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which of these two you have chosen to take over this apostolic ministry, which Judas left to go where he belongs. Then they cast lots, and a lot fell to Matthias. So he was added to the eleven apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson according to 1 Peter chapters 4 and 5. Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and of God rests on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any kind of criminal or even as a meddler. However, if you suffer as a Christian, do not be ashamed, but praise God and that you bear that name. For it is time for judgment to begin with the family of God. And if, and if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God? And if it is hard for the righteous to be saved, what will become of the ungodly and the sinner? So then those who suffer according to God's will should commit themselves to their faithful creator and continue to do good. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And that, and, and that God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, while himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast, to him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 17th chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life. They may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And the glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. If you have any children at home, I invite them to gather around the screen, especially now as Roxy has a special message for them. Well, hello, everybody. I brought along Mr. Sam again today to help me share my message, God's message. And um, so you at home, what I want you to do is I want you to make a really strong muscle. Let's see, all those muscles, they're like little strands in there, but when they come together, they make something pretty big, right? Well, for some of us, it might make us pretty big. And I don't know, let's see how Mr. Sam is. Oh, this is pretty good. Both arms, yeah, okay. So let's try something else to, to get this idea of being stronger as a group or more than one. I brought along some sticks. Now let's see. Now my one stick, I can break that pretty easy. But let me see how I can do with a group of sticks. Seriously, I am trying, but it's not working. Okay, remember, and Sam, remember, one stick was easy, but a group was more difficult. In our Bible lesson for today, we hear about Jesus praying for his disciples. Um, Jesus was going to be leaving them, and he was um, wanting them to be strong, to be able to go forth and do the ministry, um, to share the news about him and, and God's love for everyone. So he was praying for them to come together, to be unified, because the world, like it is today, there's lots of sin out there. And um, in our reading today, we hear about Satan as kind of a scary thought of roar, like a roaring lion. Um, but when we're together, um, we, are, we are stronger. We're stronger as Christian, a Christian family. Um, so that's what um, the point of today is, is that when we're together unified as, as Christians, um, those who love Jesus, um, we're, we're stronger. Um, and we're so blessed to be able to have worship services where we can come together and be unified um, to deal with what the world has to give to us. Um, and as I said, there's a lots of sin in there, but um, God has came, Jesus has overcome um, the sin of the world. And so my prayer for you today is that you would have a wonderful week in the Lord, um, to know that you are strong in the Lord as you join together with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for the blessings that you've given to us to give us that Christian family that comes together um, to love and to strengthen each other. And all God's children say, amen. We'll continue with the singing of the next hymn, 461. by Redeemer lives. What comfort then 
sweet sentence gives. He lives, he lives, who once was dead. He lives, my ever-living head. He lives, triumphant from the grave. He lives, eternally to save. He lives, all glorious in the Sky. He lives exalted there on high. He lives all glory to his name. He lives by Jesus still the same. Oh, the sweet joy there sentence gives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Definitely want to make sure you hear this message, so we'll start over again. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When we used to live up by the metro area, and when I was the first young pastor, young pastor family, we were always looking for free things to do. (laughs) And it was nice that we could go to Como Zoo over in St. Paul because it's a free zoo, and that was wonderful. So we went to Como Zoo a lot. And one time we were going to Como Zoo, and we were coming to the parking lot, and we were coming through the turnstiles, and this lion was just roaring. I mean, just shaking everything. I could feel it in my chest, this, ro- this lion was roaring so loud. And when you come in, if you know Como Zoo, you come in, and the lion's on the opposite end of the zoo. But he was just going crazy. And this lion, I don't know what he was so agitated about, but he was having everybody else agitated too. The gorillas were pounding on the glass of their enclosure. I thought those gorillas were going to get out, and they're big. And everything else is agitated. And I think it was because this lion was kept on roaring and roaring, and it's got everything all agitated. What Peter says in our text, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Our enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for those to devour. And he has a lot of people agitated today. My goodness. If there's one word I think I could pick today to describe our nation, our people, our community, it's agitated. We have people who are agitated that they're really agitated because they don't think people are taking this virus serious enough. They need to do more. They need to be more cautious. We have people agitated who are saying, no, we've taken this too far. And so we've got to get back to normal, whatever normal is. And you have business owners who are agitated because they're losing money. Our ag community is seriously agitated, and rightfully so. It's hard times for a lot of people. Just agitated that it can't be right and back to normal. And the devil loves it. <laughs> the devil loves all this agitation. It's a playground for him. The devil, our enemy, is looking for those to devour. And he's devouring people. And all this agitation, all this angst, the suicide rate, you know, is up 300 the people who are consuming alcohol and drugs has skyrocketed in the last two months. Domestic abuse in homes, both verbal and physical, has gone up 25%, the statistics tell us, in the last two months. Depression and anxiety 
is on the rise and lots of people who I even personally talk to. There's a lot of people who are agitated, who are our enemy, the devil, is roaring around and causing the agitation even more so. We live in hard times. There's no doubt about that. So what do we do? Well, Peter, right before this, tells us in the text, humble yourselves, therefore under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Let me read that verse one more time. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Humble yourself. That's meaning saying, you know what? I don't have it all figured out. I need help. I can't do it all on my own. And so you're feeling any of these things of just this angst, this anxiety, this agitation in your life, it might be a good time to say, I need help. Maybe the drinking has gotten too much. Maybe this addiction or that addiction has gotten a little bit out of control. Maybe the depression is getting a little deeper. The anger a little hotter. Humble yourselves, it says, and saying, I don't have this all figured out. This life is out of control. I need help. I'm afraid so many people refuse to look for help or seek out help or too proud to find help. But help is out there. Help is for us, and we can't do it alone. As Roxy said in the children's message, we need a sense of unity. God cremates created us for community to help bear each other's burdens and cares and concerns and also to share in joys and laughter of life, all of it. Humble yourself. You know, I I don't have it all figured out. As you might have heard that we're going to have in-person worship services and our Senate, Missouri Senate, has made national headlines because we are defying governor's orders, potentially. Hopefully not, potentially. And, and so what do you do? You humble yourself. And I, you know, I think, listen to our governor on Wednesday, he was humbling himself too. He realized that he doesn't have it all figured out too and that he's had to make hard decisions. This is not all easy. And, he, and he's struggling. And I sense that and I get that. So when you don't know what to do and you don't know what direction to go, what do you do? You, you humble yourself under God's mighty hand. But then you have to follow your conscience. You have to follow your conscience, how God is guiding and directing you. Because we can't sin against conscience. And so sometimes our consciences lead us in different directions, in different ways, what is best, and what is right, and the things to do in this world. But it all starts with humbling yourself, saying, I don't have it all figured out. Government, you don't have it all figured out either. So we're going to humble ourselves under God's mighty hand that he may lift us up and do time and do ways and do processes. The other thing, though, is this. Jesus told his disciples, I will remain in the world no longer. But they are the world, Father. He's talking about the disciples. But he said, Father, my disciples, the ones you have given me, the one who have, you put your name upon, those who belong to me, who belong to you then, they're, they're in the world. Father. They're going to remain in this world of pandemics, of agitation, of anger, and have to figure out hard decisions and make hard decisions and not know always what is the best and right way to go. Father, these are still in the world. I'm coming to you, Holy Father, but Lord, Heavenly Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me so they may be one as we are one, Holy Father. God knows we're going to have trials and tribulations in this world. He knew it, and he prayed for us that we would struggle with these types of things in this world of sin and fallenness and brokenness. 
And Peter reminded us today, dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange was happening to you. Don't be surprised. This is a fallen, broken world. It's not our true home. Don't be surprised about pandemics. Don't be surprised about economic hurts and downturns. Don't be surprised about we have to make hard decisions that we don't know which way is always to go. Don't be surprised by those things. But rejoice. Peter says, but rejoice that you participate in the sufferings of Christ. And that will always be our guiding light in all decisions. That will always be our foundation that will always be the thing that leads us forward, is that we participate in the life of Christ. We participate in his love for us. We participate in his sufferings as we suffer for him in this world when we have to sacrifice ourselves on behalf of others. We participate in him in the very body and blood of the altar. So we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. It's not going to be easy. This world has never promised to be easy for any one of us. And Jesus is still at the right hand of the Father as he inter- was interceding for these disciples in the upper room. Know this, our, your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ sees you, sees your position, sees where you're at, and continues to intercede for you and for I by the power of his cross and love before the Father. We're not orphaned, we're not left alone, but we are loved. No matter what comes these next few weeks, these next few months, this year, we participate in Christ. And that makes all the difference for you and for me who are in Christ Jesus this day. Amen. We come to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Lord, you have promised not to abandon your people, but to be with us always. Grant us grace to hear your word with faith and receive your holy sacrament with repentant hearts. And keep what we hear and receive upon our lips in holy lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have delivered the saints from fiery trial and raised up martyr from the darkness of death to everlasting life. Give us courage, that we may give bold witness to the truth in our own day, and proclaim Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you have power over all things, and point an order on earth for the protection of the weak, the punishment of the evildoer, and the encouragement of virtue. Bless Donald, our president, Tim, our governor, and all who make and minister and judge our laws. Give them wisdom from the challenges of our times. Preserve them from self-serving concerns. Give us grace that we may honor the gift of liberty and be good citizens and neighbors to all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we rejoice in the Savior's promise to guard the people who wear your name by baptism and faith. Until we are with you in your presence forevermore, guard us from the devil who prowls like a roaring lion. Lord, we thank you for those men and women throughout the years of this Memorial Day who have served and protected the cause of liberty and freedom. Lord, we honor them this day in their sacrifice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, finally, you have compassion upon all who suffer. Give grace to the sick and to those with mental illness, to the dying in the last hours, to the Lord, Lord, who has been made known to us for need in prayer. So, Lord, we lift before you Daryl, Bill, John, and those battling cancer, Tim, Bing, Joel, and Steve. And for those names in our hearts before you who we know who are suffering, Grant them patience in their afflictions and deliver them according to your gracious will. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Lord, we place all these things in your hands. Trust in your goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I'm still astounded by, even though we have not met in this sanctuary for two months now, the support, though, that's been continued to be given by your offerings, that the gospel still might be proclaimed. And this shows the importance you see in the lives that the gospel is more important than ever right now. So thank you. In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease, my comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of hell, no scheme of man, can ever pluck me from his hand till he returns or calls me home. Here in the power of Christ I'll stand. We join now together in the prayer our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude with our final hymn, 662, Onward Christian Soldiers. Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before Christ the royal master leads against the foe forward into battle See his banners go, onward Christian soldiers marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Like a mighty army, 
Musa Church of God. Brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We are not divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine, one in charity. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before. Crowns and thrones may perish, kingdoms rise and wane. But the church of Jesus constant will remain. Gates of hell can never against the church prevail. We have Christ's own promise, and that cannot fail. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war. With the cross of Jesus, going on before.